Atomstack recently reached out and sent me the new Ace Pro V2 laser engraver to check out. Is this the budget laser that belongs in your shop? Stick around and you'll find out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Adam Stack was kind enough to send to me this new Ace Pro V2 laser engraving machine as well as the F30 V2 air assist pump and I'm going to do a little review for you. Now, they did uh, send this to me free of charge, but I am under no obligation to give them any kind of positive review. So you are going to hear my 100% honest uh, review as always. So let me go over a couple of the things and, and give you an idea of what we're going to cover in this video really quick. I'm going to talk about the package contents, which you're going to get in the box, give you a couple of assembly tips. We're going to go over the Atom Stack app, um, as well as some of the air assist functions. And then we're going to get into some tests. I'm going to cover uh, what I've done here, we're going to cut some uh, five millimeter Baltic birch plywood, see how that goes. We're going to do a little bit of uh, tile uh, engraving here using the uh, Norton White tile method. We're also going to cover uh, how it performs using a dark and opaque acrylic. So you'll get some information on that. And then of course, I'm going to go over my final thoughts. I'll let you know the, both the positive and negatives as I see them. Uh, on this particular unit and I will let you know that I'm going to hold off on giving my final review. I'll probably give you a, a rough idea of what I think of what we've got here so far. Uh, but there are a few features that are not quite ready yet. There is a uh, an add-on that will be shipping um, that Adam Stack is going to send me that uh, if you order it, you'll get it as well. It's just not quite ready yet, but that'll add some extra features. So without further ado, let's get in to the review. The Atomstack A10 Pro is sold in kit form, so you will need to set aside some time to assemble the unit. Overall, the product is very well packaged with a lot of attention to detail. All of the parts are separated by individual pieces of foam. Even when multiple parts are put in a single slot, there is often uh, foam in between each part uh, to keep them from rubbing against one another. Taking a look at what's included in the package, we have our frame pieces, the four main pieces here. We've got uh, two support beams. We have the laser module itself. We have the x-axis connection line. We have the x-axis here. We have our various hardware pieces, and I will note that these are individually labeled. I always like to see a company that takes the time to label uh, the individual screws and nuts, etc., so that you're not forced to uh, spend time measuring uh, those yourself and figuring it out. We have the laser module, we have the control box that already has the cables included in the uh, daisy chain, we have the power supply power cord, we have a USB-C cable here which is really nice, our safety goggles, and then the focus card which is quite an upgrade. We have different heights for cutting and engraving that are clearly marked. The assembly process is pretty straightforward and it took me about 35 minutes to complete in total. I will note there's a couple of uh, points, not necessarily confusing, but you will see, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the bags are labeled per step and it gives you the uh, screw and the number of pieces. Now, for example, here in step two, it shows M5 by 14 and you're going to need one, two, three, uh, and then four when you get to by the time you get to step three so you're actually using four of the pieces from the bag of step two but it's labeled six pieces uh, so you got two left over while those same screws are not extras those are actually used a little later on when you get here to step five so all in all you got all the screws and, ex and uh, parts that you need you just may um, end up using them at various stages that are not uh, listed. Here at the uh, final step in step 7, the uh, two thumb screws that go to hold the laser module in are later, were actually included in the spare bag. Um, and then the spare says that it's got, looks like four, two different sizes, uh, although I only have two in this bag. One of the methods that you can use to control the Atom Stack A10 version 2 is to use the phone app. 
So we will choose A10 Pro version 2 here. And hit next. Last post on this first screen, you will enter the password. Hit connect. And we are now connected. And we have added the device successfully. So now we have the device settings that are available here. Um, you can see that the engraver is online. We have a few features there. There is no camera, there's no gallery. And we have a few features. I'm not going to go through all of the uh, features of the app here. Um, honestly, I, I've never used the, the first Atom Stack laser that I had. Did uh, The Wi-Fi was touted in the beginning that you'd be able to control it remotely. Um, they kind of added, half added that feature down the road eventually. I've never used it. You never want to leave these things unattended anyway. So... Um, and the ability to do things on the computer using Lightburn are going to be far superior to anything that you do uh, via the app. So I think there are a few things here that uh, you do need the app for to enable. Um, but uh, overall, most of this review, I'm going to be more focused on utilizing Lightburn. But uh, this is the app. It is very easy to connect. The Wi-Fi antenna is built in, so out of the box, you do have some uh, app functionality and Wi-Fi connectivity. There are a few items in the app that I would like to cover uh, very quickly. So you do have some very basic creation ability here. You could draw something on the screen and then engrave that, uh, the ability to uh, write text, uh, there are some very basic shapes here, and under more, you have signature, image, mask, QR code, barcode, etc. So very rudimentary ability to create uh, there. If you have the thumb drive installed in the machine, uh, you can see what's on there. If you've imported or exported some G code for the uh, machine to burn. Now, a few of the features here um, require additional parts. Uh, Adam Stack is going to be releasing and hopefully sending me in April the Z-axis uh, motor that will allow you to do things like autofocus. It'll also um, provide some flame detection capabilities, which should be great. So here I can uh, also turn on continuing carving after power failure. I um, also have some control here over the positioning mode, so whether I use uh, the laser itself as an indicator which is going to be the truest or this does have the red cross uh, pointing laser which is going to be offset and you have position correction here so you can um, tell the laser to mark a point and then reposition it to line up your red dot exactly so that is one place that you can set this and then you have your uh, engraving range. I believe this should be 400 by 400 um, and then things like the uh, system upgrade. Now because this is connected over Wi-Fi right now my phone will not uh, reach out so um, there are a few other things here under service like user manual, common problems, etc. But as you can see since I'm connected to the uh, device and it, um, I'm not connected to my router at this moment my phone does not have internet capability. A little test drive here of the app itself. So if we come in here to creation, we can choose text. We'll just type a little something here on the screen. You can reposition it. You can expand it, make it bigger, smaller, rotate it, uh, etc. All the things that you'd normally be able to do on a touch screen. Uh, we'll hit the next button up here. It will take us, give us an idea. Again, you can reposition it. Um, you have your choice on whether you want to use absolute coordinates, current position, or user origin. 
There is a list of materials here that you can choose and that will automatically set your power, speed, uh, etc. I am going to choose, oh, let's see. We're gonna do craft paper, that's what I had. Now, I don't wanna start this on fire, so I'm gonna drop the power down here to 10. Um, and just for fun, we are going to choose 30,000 which is, I believe, the max speed on this. Probably won't make any marks on my paper, which is fine. So once I have that done, uh, I could also change line spacing, bi-directional engraving. Um, then I will hit next again. I'm not sure why that is not wanting to respond. Okay, there you go. You can see this is a little bit buggy. Another reason I don't exactly like using phone apps to control something like a laser. You get this page that says uh, whether, whether to enter the control page. I will hit OK and that will take me here. From here I can control the laser. I can tell it to home. The square border here is basically the framing and it will continue to frame the engrave area until you hit stop. Um, again, autofocus doesn't work here uh, yet. Then if I hit the start, it will say, whoops. There definitely seems to be some issues with the controls up here. And I just downloaded this app today, so I'm assuming it's the latest version. But uh, when you do get it to respond, it'll ask if you want to start. You can hit OK, and then it gives you to the working page. So. It says elapsed time, but it's actually showing me a percentage uh, power, so it looks like I can control the power and speed uh, while it is working um, at this point. And then, of course, I can either pause the job um, and then start it up again, which is a nice feature, or I can completely stop the job. So uh, it does look like it is doing something there on, on my paper. But... Um, so that is the, uh, the app in operation. Before we head out to the laser den and take a look at the unit, let's look at some of the specifications. So again, this is, uh, you can see up here, the Atom Stack Ace Pro V2. So it's kind of the Ace Pro is the family. And that consists, uh, the unit that we'll be looking at is the A10 Pro V2. Um, so you've got the uh, size, 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter for engraving and cutting, all these different things it can do. Input power is 60 watts. The optical output power is 12 watts. Maximum speed, 30,000 millimeters per minute. Uh, it's a 455 nanometer wavelength uh, diode laser. And there's your engraving ac accuracy and your dot size is uh, 0 0.06 by 0 0.08 millimeters. You do have 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi on board. The mobile app is good for Android and o iOS. You can run the uh, Laser Gerbil software that comes with it on Windows or Mac OS, and those are also available, um, or Lightburn is what we'll be using mostly. And let's see, you can see all the various Supported formats, focus, once you get that automated Z plate, um, you'll be able to do uh, autofocus and you have a tip over alarm. So if your laser gets bumped or knocked off a table or just tilted in any way, if it's greater than 15 degrees, it's gonna stop working. So there are some features uh, of this unit. Okay, we've moved outside into my laser workshop, and what an odd space for a diode laser. Uh, currently, I actually have the diode laser inside my CO2 laser. Now, why would I do this? Um, one main reason. Whenever you're uh, cutting or engraving, you're going to be releasing particulates, you're burning stuff. So you're going to have smoke. Now, if you run your laser engraver like this atom stack out you know on your back patio or in your backyard or something like that where smoke is not a uh, factor and it can just blow away then that's great but if you're doing it in any kind of an enclosed space like uh, a workshop uh, inside your home anything like that you're going to want to deal with the smoke now 
The uh, Ace Pro V2 here, as you can see, is an open frame design. It does not have an enclosure that comes with it. There is one available on the Atom Stack website. Um, but in its current configuration, you're going to need to deal with the smoke. That is why I currently have it inside my CO2 laser. The CO2 laser has a smoke removal system. I have an inline uh, fan that is vented out a window. And so this will allow me to use this on the CO2 uh, honeycomb bed and the smoke will be drawn out through the bottom. The last item we're going to connect uh, before doing any cutting or engraving is the air assist. Now Adam Stack also sent me uh, this air assist unit and um, if you get one accessory with this laser engraver I would always start with an air assist probably followed secondly by the honeycomb um, after that then you can look at other things like the display and uh, rotary attachments so let's get this connected um, we're going to start by connecting the included rubber hose to the air outlet on the air assist pump once that is connected, we will connect the other end of the rubber hose or silicone hose to the air assist port on the laser head itself. And the final connection is the larger of the two barrel plugs, and that's going to go onto the front or back side. Probably, I guess you could consider this the front side since it's got the control here uh, for the pump. Now the power is supplied from the uh, control unit and it is compatible with Lightburn, so that can be start, started and stopped uh, via software uh, through Lightburn. But there's one setting that needs to be done, so let's make that setting change now. To enable Air Assist in Lightburn, we're going to go to Edit Device Settings, and then we want to toggle Air Assist M7. So we will select Yes, and next we will hit OK. And if we come over here to the cuts and layers, and let's just add a little shape here onto the work area. And now we have the air assist that we can toggle. The working area of this laser is 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters. Here I show it framing a 399.5 millimeter by 399.5 millimeter square. If I put in 400 by 400, it gave me an error. That's more likely a limitation of light burn, um, not wanting to work outside of the area of the laser uh, than a limitation of the laser itself. Okay, let's get ready to do our first cut. We're gonna do a test card so we can see how this operates. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down a honeycomb hold down pin available in my Etsy shop um, to make sure that my wood stays in place. Everything is positioned and we will start this cut shortly. The next step will be to set our focused distance. So since we're gonna be doing some cutting, I'm using the cutting uh, side or the cutting height, four millimeters uh, of this. And if we were doing engraving, which we actually are, so this should be interesting, it would be eight millimeters. The next item that we're going to investigate is cutting acrylic. Now this is three millimeter black acrylic. There are only certain colors um, that you'll be able to cut using a diode laser. Your darker colors, your non-transparent colors will work okay with uh, diode lasers, but uh, your clear, light, and translucent colors are not gonna work as well. Now it's very important to note that when using a diode, or actually any laser, uh, to cut acrylic, uh, acrylic is one of the things that can uh, start fire most uh, commonly, so you really do need some air assist to make sure that uh, you're blowing um, the flame out that's uh, pretty prevalent. So let's go ahead and get this one started. And 
now that we have this cut out, you can see we have a fun little keychain. Now let's take a look and see what happens if we try and engrave the same little keychain on clear acrylic. Typically what you'll find happening is So here is the result of working with clear acrylic using this diode laser. As you can see, uh, the pattern is uh, somewhat recognizable, but basically this wavelength of light is going to pass straight through clear and trans, uh, transparent acrylic. So it's really not going to have much effect on it. Now, there are ways to engrave on clear, clear acrylic or transparent acrylic. Uh, you can spray it. Um, with something that the laser can interact with. Uh, that's kind of a, uh, you know, a workaround or a hack, uh, but it's not necessarily um, recommended. Uh, there's no telling what sort of gases you're giving off when you're working with that. But you will see people that are very, um, that have very decent success uh, doing uh, clear uh, engravings on acrylic and uh, other things. One of the places that diode lasers really excel as engraving. Now I'm going to put this to the test. This particular laser engraver is said to operate up to 30,000 millimeters per minute. Now that's 500 millimeters per second. Uh, I never run my CO2 laser that fast. It's just that's kind of well beyond the upper range uh, that it can operate. So I'm going to do a test tile here and get me a little bit of information and we're going to see how well um, this unit can operate at these speeds. Here are the results of our test. So it looks like I will be able to run and engrave. Uh, this is, if you haven't seen it, this is essentially called the Norton white tile method. That is a white uh, ceramic tile. It was painted with a coat of red spray paint and then it was coated again with a, with a uh, coat of black spray paint. So essentially what I'm doing here is removing the black to expose the red, but I don't want to go too uh, with too much power because it will, as you can see here, as we get into the 78 and 80 level power, uh, we're removing the red and getting down to the white. But the powers before that, not quite removing enough red. So I'm gonna go with 72 at uh, 500 millimeters per second, and we're gonna try and engrave of an image that I created using AI. All right, my image is loaded. Let's see if this is truly a CO2 killer. And here we have the finished engraving. So you can see we got pretty good detail. We we're a little hot there, kind of in the uh, upper, behind the nose, upper jaw area uh, that exposed a little too much white. Uh, but again, this was just a, a rough idea. Now you will have seen that the laser was jerking back and forth. It never really got up to speed. Um, I think that's the way that uh, light burn controls it. We're gonna take a quick look at uh, how the app controls it, uh, but essentially I was not able to get uh, anywhere close to that 30,000 millimeters a second or 30,000 millimeters per minute on this engrave. So here we are engraving at 18,000 millimeters per minute, which uh, equates to 300 millimeters per second, which is about the max that I would use my CO2 laser at. 
Um, as you can see, this is at 80% power and we are just barely making uh, any kind of a uh, mark on this. Uh, I think this is just uh, some pine plywood. So um, going any faster is useless. Uh, I don't like to run the power uh, above 80%. I mean, I could go to 100, but it probably wouldn't be making uh, that big of a difference here. Um, so you can see we're kind of at the upper limit of what you could do for engraving. Actually, we're beyond the upper limit of what you could do for engraving. And with this machine, I'm now running about 4,000 millimeters uh, per minute um, at 80% power. So you can see with this setting, you get a, de a nice deep engrave, uh, but that's probably where you'd have to uh, stay uh, to get acceptable results. Maybe a little dark on this uh, particular wood, um, but that just gives you an idea of the power and speed combination that you're going to need to do engravings with this machine. All right, well now that we are back in from the uh, laser den, let's talk about um, some of the uh, pluses and minuses of this particular laser engraver from Atomstack. So first thing, uh, definitely a, a plus is the price. Um, it is, uh, as it was sent to me for this unit, what you see here, the A10 Pro V2 or ACE 10, you'll see both of those um, in different places, but the, uh, this unit is 399, and then the F30 V2 air assist pump is 89.99. So that is 489.98 as you see here. Now, back in November of 2021, I bought my first uh, laser engraver, which was also an Atom Stack, and that was the X7 Pro, which was a 10 watt uh, module, or the laser was 10 watts, this one's 12. Um, I paid $579.99 uh, back then, and it did not come with uh, safety glasses. I had to order those separately. So the ones that you saw in the intro of this video, those cost me an additional $40 or $39.99. So that was $619.98 back in, uh, November of 2021 for a laser engraver that has uh, fewer features for the most part. Now, um, other pluses. So we got price, that's going for us. Air assist. So this pump, this V2 pump with this unit, uh, it plugs in, it gets power from the control module and it is compatible with Lightburn. So you can, as you saw earlier, you make those settings in Lightburn and then you are able to um, toggle uh, using your light burn settings whether or not the air assist pump comes on or off uh, during your graving. And then obviously you have the power control here. So you, you know, even if you have it toggled on, let's say you're doing some engraving, you can go low power and then it's just an, as easy as turning this knob here and you can go high power. So if you're cutting, so that's great. Um, it's a pretty easy to use system. Obviously, since it's, it, you know, an open, uh, open system like this, it's easy to get access to everything. Um, the controls and layouts are, are great. And uh, so it's, it's definitely pretty um, user friendly, especially if you're a beginner. Uh, so I'd say it's got that going for you. It's not gonna take up a whole lot of space. Now, um, whether you wanna call it a pro or a con, um, you could say maybe it's a little bit of a con it's not enclosed, right? A lot of, it seems like most of the laser manufacturers are moving away from these open frame uh, design, which in a sense is good because from safety aspect, it's much nicer to have a, an enclosed design that traps all of the laser light in, it traps the fumes in, it makes it easier to exhaust those fumes. Um, however, that's gonna add you know, cost to it. And especially if you're just starting out, maybe you're not, you know, ready to, to make a business out of this, but you just want to have a laser engraver um, for a hobby or maybe very small run uh, products. Um, you're going to want to start small. You're going to want to have something that's budget friendly so that you're not spending north of a thousand dollars just to get into laser engraving. So, you know, something like this, like I said, this in the air assist pump 489, you've got a, a laser engraver, engraver that's easy to use. Um, and it's pretty portable. You know, if you're using this in a space and it's, it's confined, you can actually, uh, pick this thing up. It's super light. You could, put a couple of hooks on the wall and you could hang it on the wall if you wanted to just to get it out of the space. Um, or I can put it, you know, underneath a table. That's where my X7 Pro has lived uh, once I got the CO2. It's just easy to move around. It's not, you know, taking up a ton of space. So I think that's definitely a pro. Um, 
We've already talked about the app control at the beginning, so having that ability um, to basically control the movement of the laser with fine detail, getting it to the center of a position so that you're not necessarily tied to your computer and you're, you're over here looking in light burn and then you know trying to figure out, okay, do I need to go back and forth, especially if your computer's far away from uh, the laser. It's nice to have that minute control right there at your fingertips. Um, now, this one does not come with a display Display, you can order one and I think that would also give you some of those controls um, but this is already built in the Wi-Fi works it's easy to connect and so you do have those controls you can frame right there at the laser which is always handy and then you can start your job um, and monitor the progress as well um, it's got really good uh, performance so let's talk about some of the things that we did here is a five millimeter um, Baltic birch um, you know, plywood that I did my um, test pattern on. What we can see here is the two test cards. Now this one was done on the ACE Pro V2 and this one was done on my 60 watt ohm tech CO2 laser. So over here the diode lasers are going to run a lot slower. This one, this column is 50 millimeters per minute and that translates to 0 0.83 millimeters per second. So you can see starting at 50 percent, 60 percent, 70 percent, 80 percent we were able to cut these out. So we got all the way up to um, at 80 percent which is about as high as I like to run uh, the laser. Um, it's actually the highest setting for single pass on their recommended settings sheet as well. Uh, we got to 150 millimeters per minute, which translates to 2.5 millimeters per second. Probably could have gone a little bit faster, um, but we were kind of reaching the edge there. So if you look at the CO2 laser um, at 40%, which is about the max that I like to routinely run my CO2 laser at, um, I can do 12, meter, 12 millimeters a second on that laser. So now again, huge difference in cost. That laser was over $2,000. This one is $489. Um, but it's about, so we had 2.5 millimeters per second versus 12, so we're about four times faster on the CO2. Now again, this is only a 12 watt laser module. You can get the uh, 24 watt laser module and you're gonna be able to cut things out at faster speeds, but this was done in one pass, so that's great. Now here's some uh, acrylic and three millimeter uh, Baltic Baltic birch plywood. So you can see here we did some uh, engraving as well as the cutting. The cutting went well. Um, it was very easy to do. Same with the black acrylic. We've got our engraving lines there as well. This one's a little scuffed because I forgot to turn on the air assist or I actually had, did not uh, plug in the hose uh, because I had disconnected it uh, the, the day prior. Um, but then I cut a smaller version out and you can see it looks just great. So it works very well on uh, the acrylic. And finally we have the tile. So again, this is just a white tile that was spray painted red and then it was spray painted black. So the goal was to remove the black paint leaving the red. Um, I did the, uh, the test uh, test tile before that, you saw what I did. So this was our result. Again, this was not spending a ton of time dialing things in, but you can see the fine level of detail that you're able to get due to the very precise dot size on the Atom Stack Ace Pro uh, V2. So definitely a, a great laser, especially if you wanna do um, uh, engraving on tile or wood, things like that. You're gonna be able to get a lot of detail. One of the other aspects that I really like that they've added to this machine is the drag chain. My X7 Pro did not have this, so you can see that uh, allows the cabling at least for the Y axis uh, to move very smoothly and it's not gonna drag or get snagged on anything. The next pro that I would like to talk about is cleaning. Now, for example, I have here my uh, X7 Pro. Now, originally, uh, this unit did not, or it, it, it had a nose cone on it, so you'd have to remove uh, one or two screws to get access to this. And then, uh, also originally, it did not have this um, protective lens on the front. It only had uh, the actual focusing lens here. So, cleaning was a little bit tricky, not to mention, um, if you wanted to have good access to everything, you had to remove this little glass panel. Now, with the new 
the Ace Pro V2, uh, it's pretty easy to clean because one, the module itself, the protective lens is magnetically affixed. So that just pops right off and pops right back on. If you're just doing basic cleaning maintenance, this unscrews and then they recommend in the manual that you, that you just get a uh, Q-tip or a lint-free cloth and some alcohol to clean the lens. Now, if you do have to do some more uh, detailed cleaning on this, there's one set screw here on the side. Now, I will note, they do not give you the wrench for this. It's a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench, so you just have to loosen that. And then this whole, if I take the air assist piece off, or the hose off itself, then this was this was much easier the first time I did it. There we go. The the air assist tubing everything comes off as one piece, and then you have the lens module right here. It also has a protective window on it that unscrews and that gets you um, access to the focusing lens. You really shouldn't have to mess with this. Um, you can take off the protective uh, window to clean that. Um, these are consumable. You may need to replace this after some time. They do recommend cleaning after every eight hours of use. Um, I can't say that I have seen replacement lenses or windows on the Atom Stack website uh, just yet. I ordered mine originally from AliExpress when, uh, if you've followed my channel, you'd uh, have seen that I actually ended up with a cracked lens on my uh, X7 Pro probably because it wasn't cleaned properly. But uh, so ease of cleaning, definitely another positive. Another aspect about this laser that I really think is a, a positive um, feather in its cap, if you will say, is the pointing, uh, pointing the red dot, you know, crosshair here. So it's really great to have something that you can use to line up um, your, uh, you know, media before you engrave. So here I can see that uh, it is, you know, perpendicular and square to the gantry. Now I've disconnected the motors. Usually when the laser's on, you can't uh, manually move things like I'm doing right here. Um, but, you know, using the app, you could jog and make sure that everything was lined up. And again, it does have the, uh, the offset feature. So, you know, if I, if I tell the laser to start right where that crosshair is, when I actually start it, it's going to move over so that the uh, nozzle is actually in that position. So another positive uh, aspect of this laser. One additional plus that I'd like to bring up is the um, focus card uh, or tool that they give you. Um, it's great to see something uh, this useful. So they have, uh, you've got four millimeters for cutting and eight millimeters for engraving. And usually what that means is you know, the laser has a certain focal distance, right? So in engraving, it's, I'm going to guess, you know, but uh, from the bottom of this uh, protective cover, eight millimeters is the exact focal point. So when you're engraving, you want that smallest dot to be right on the surface of what you're engraving. When you're cutting, um, especially thicker materials, it can be better served to actually have your focal point in the middle of whatever you're cutting or below the surface because your, your beam is, is converging and then diverging. So they're giving you a tool that's going to make your experience even better. Um, on the X7 Pro, all we had was this two millimeter uh, card. Half the time, people didn't even know this was the fo focus card or the for focal distance because it looks like a business card. There's a bunch of, there's a little packet that's got a lot of, you know, little wood things and little, you know, just kind of test pieces for you to try your first engraves on. Um, and a lot of people, myself included, initially thought this was just another piece of uh, something to engrave, but this was actually how you set the focus and there was no um, differentiation between engraving and cutting. So that's uh, definitely great to see. Now let's move on to the negative aspects of this particular unit. My biggest gripe probably is that they have chosen to make the power button also the emergency stop. So. I mean, in my mind, essentially, you don't have an emergency stop. All you have is a power button. Um, and 
you know, normally it's nice to just be able to, to hit that big red oh crap button and you're able to shut off the machine because usually when things are going wrong, uh, half of your brain flies out the window and all you can kind of do is start banging stuff and hoping that you, you know, you get everything shut off in time. Um, so I wish they would have stay, uh, stayed with the uh, larger ones. I'll show you what it looked like on the X7 Pro. So here we have the uh, emergency stop button on the X7 Pro. So you can see you have your power button right here, um, but if something goes wrong, all you do is hit that button and it shuts the power off to everything. And then to actually turn it back on, you have to rotate the button. Um, so it's, it's great to be able to just smack that and turn the power of the machine off in an emergency. So um, I wish they would have stuck, stuck with that. That's pretty common in the laser industry. Now, this is a minor gripe. Um, you know, I already mentioned they don't include a screen, again, on the X7 Pro, which was a lot more expensive, um, or at least, a, you know, $179 more expensive. Uh, you had this little tiny touch screen here. Again, you can order one for the Ace Pro V2. Um, it would have been nice to have those additional controls. Not a huge deal, definitely not a deal breaker, but it's a nice to have. My final gripe is that they did not include any kind of surface protection with the device itself. Now again, when I got my X7 Pro, it at least came with this stainless steel plate that you could put underneath it um, so that when you were doing some engraving or whatever, you had something to protect the surface. Now, a diode laser can actually mark a stainless steel, um, any kind of stainless steel if the power is high enough. So you have to be very careful what you set this on. Obviously you would never want to set it on something that's, you know, wood or flammable or anything like that. Um, so you want to be able to protect the surface that it's uh, sitting on. Um, again, I understand it. They're trying to make things as, as budget friendly and kind of a bare minimum kit here for you. Um, but I can't imagine this would cost too much. So it would be nice to at least continue to include. It may not be the entire uh, engrave, engraving size of the unit, but at least have something that you can throw down. Now you can go to a you know a hardware store and get a. Um, I used kind of like 12 by 12 uh, tiles um, to engrave on when I first started. Um, that that works. It's not the most ideal, but uh, it'll get you through in a pinch. So um, with all those gripes being said, let me move in to some final thoughts and some recommendations. One con with this machine would definitely be the app. And now apps come and go, or they get updated um, or not. Uh, but as you saw when I was trying in the beginning of this video, uh, some of the functions on the app, um, they just weren't responsive. Now again, that could be easy as a, uh, a minor version update, fix a, fix a little bug. It could have been more specific to my phone. It always seemed to be in the upper right, right hand corner where the next or start or whatever um, button was. Um, other than that, I did have one issue where I was trying to uh, send an image to the um, laser engraver and I'd get to the very final uh, step and I'd go to hit start uh, and it would just tell me that start failed. Um, but again, apps can be fixed. It's easy to update that, th you know, things of that nature. So minor flaw, um, definitely not a deal breaker. Uh, again, I would probably use the app a lot more just to do the basic movement controls of the machine than ever trying to start or create a job uh, from the app. All right. Thanks for sticking around this long. I know it was kind of a, a long video, but um, you know me, I like to get all the information out there. So um, overall, I definitely think this is a, uh, it's a quality machine. It's worked well. Um, yeah, the app is a little bit uh, buggy and uh, you know, that's something that they can fix. But uh, for the most part, I think anybody that's starting out would be happy with this machine, uh, even the 12 watt version. Um, I'd recommend if you're just mostly doing engraving, then uh, the 12 watt is going to be fine. Now, if you go to the 24, you're going to give up a little tiny bit of detail because the dot size is gonna be bigger. Um, but you do, even in engraving, when you have more power, you can increase your speed, which is going to cut down the time that it takes you to either engrave or cut uh, material. So, um, like I said, I'm kind of holding off on my final overall review, but you know, in the state that it's in, I'd give it probably three out of five stars. Um, but I think that number is definitely gonna go up because 
What Atomstack is doing with this machine is they have a motorized Z-plate with some additional features. Um, like I said, they're, they're planning on sending that out soon, so hopefully I'll get it and I'll be able to append uh, this review or, I mean, I'll make another video, but um, that's gonna give you a number of, of features. Uh, one, you're gonna have autofocus. You can see on the control unit itself, it's got an autofocus button, so that will be nice. Um, having a motorized Z-axis allows you to do a sink cut. So when you're cutting thicker materials, uh, you know, at one point you focus so far down, but then as you continue to cut, now this takes multiple passes, but you're actually lowering the laser each time you do another pass so that your, uh, that focus distance is going deeper and deeper into the material so that you can cut thicker materials. So that's a great feature. Um, it's also going to add flame detection, which is going to be uh, great. And I believe it, there's another one uh, that has to do with um, auto resume or like if you lose power, uh, something of that nature. But anyway, those will come uh, in the future once Adam Stack sends that to me. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. You got a lot of information and maybe you will find a place for this in your shop. Um, again, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. It, it seems like a pretty good uh, unit and mostly I just had little tiny issues here and there, but not bad at all. Now, if you do decide to purchase this unit, um, let me talk a little bit about accessories. The number one accessory, uh, bar none, that I would uh, recommend for that would be an air assist pump. Now this is the F30V2, um, runs 69, or no, what did we say? 89.99 uh, on their website. They do have another one that's a little more powerful and I think has some uh, more features. Um, I'm not sure exactly how compatible it is with this unit or not, but this is the one I have, this is the one I'd probably recommend. Um, so that would be my first recommendation. The second um, closely followed recommendation would be a honeycomb um, bed for the unit here. This one I also purchased from Adam Stack uh, back when I bought my X7 after a while because it is just it is huge to be able to uh, put stuff, as you saw earlier in the video, you want to have that space underneath your material um, for the laser to pass through, for the smoke and the debris to pass through. Um, it's just going to make your life a whole lot easier. So um, these run, uh, this one was $99 on the website and it does actually also come with a protective sheet that you can put uh, underneath this. So sitting on a table or something, this fits underneath and now I don't have to worry about actually, you know, hitting what is ever underneath this. It does have some hold downs. Um, if you've been following my channel, you know I, I print, I 3D print uh, honeycomb hold downs that will fit in this and that will help you hold down your material. You can use it to offset your material, which is great for acrylics. Um, it also um, is great if you're, you know, you have slightly warped wood, it'll help hold that down uh, close to that, which is very important with diode lasers since, you know, you've only got, uh, whereas like my CO2 laser, you've got uh, the focal distance is 18 millimeters from the bottom of the cone to whatever I'm engraving. On this one, if you're engraving, you've only got eight millimeters, so not a lot of distance underneath this, so it's easier to hit things, or if your wood is warped, it's, gonna, it's going to catch a lot more. Um, so, and then uh, final, there's other accessories out there, such as the, uh, the enclosure, I talked about that, that's definitely gonna be great if, you know, especially if you're doing this inside any kind of an enclosed space. The ability to get the smoke, you know, have all your smoke or whatever contained in here, and then run a tube and a fan out, um, that's gonna be huge. Highly recommended if you're if you're not using this in a you know like outdoors where you don't have to worry about smoke. Just having a fan blowing on it is not really removing air. That's just moving it around. Um, they also we talked about the display. They also have rotary devices. I'm not going to get into those because I don't have uh, any of the newer ones that Adam Stack uh, sells. But hey, Adam Stack, now that we're friends, if you want to send any of those over, I'd be more than happy to check them out and uh, give my recommendation uh, to my viewers here and to all the other people that are out there that have watched the channel because they wanted to know more about this unit at all. So once again, if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, I would appreciate if you would uh, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the little uh, notification bell so that you know when I drop new videos. Um, it's exciting, I've got uh, 
many more things coming to the channel so the the more that we involve uh, are involved with one another um, via that via comments um, you watching the videos um, all those things you're helping my channel grow the bigger my channel gets the more easy it is for me to reach out to companies or to have companies reach out to me and then I can provide you with information that will help you in our ever long quest to learn together so once again, I appreciate the time that you've spent with me and uh, let's just keep on learning and burning together.